We are at the 2019 Goodwood Festival of Speed and the very first reveal of this most show is this. It's not a most show, it is a most show, isn't it now? Kind of a bit like that to reveal something yeah, like that. Yeah, it absolutely here. is. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we're very proud to be here at Goodwood. We've been coming for five years and uh, yeah, this is the world uh, debut of this car. So, uh, and this is the, the Mono R. Yes, it is. It's a, uh, it sets the new reference for our design DNA in terms of its visual appearance, so the, the aesthetic of the car. You'll see that there's been various enhancements on the car from the, the previous version. Predominantly, uh, it follows the form, follows function, um, ethic in terms of um, trying to get more air into the car, which is why we have this, uh, this incredible uh, race. The laser cannon on the yes, side. Yes, yeah. as we call it <laughs> lovingly. Um, so obviously this is race inspired formula style uh, air inlet system. It's a ram air inlet system. What that means is we can get more air into the engine. We can add more fuel. That combined with complete re-engineered uh, um, engine blocks. So the bore and the stroke has been completely re-engineered. Because it's still a 2.5, but it's so it's Absolutely. just. Yeah, it's still 2.5, still four cylinder, um, but basically cylinder has been completely reworked, billet crank bore and stroke has been completely re-engineered, all to allow the engine to rev higher. So with higher RPM, with more air going in, more fuel means more power. So power's increased from 305 horsepower on the current car to 340 horsepower on this car. So that sets a new world record for a series production car for a uh, normally aspirated specific output engine. So uh, we're very, very proud of that. Um, and so and if you, you presumably increase bore and reduce stroke to keep the same right, sort of... Absolutely right, absolutely right. So we've increased bore from, from 89 millimetres to 90, reduced the stroke from 100 mil down to 96. So start down the front in terms of looks, obviously lights, they've moved, you can get right down here, I can see, I can see well, you know, that's pretty cool with the Yeah, the so, so, so first of all, the, 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 the design philosophy around the front end was to reduce frontal area. Mm -hmm. um, so the previous lights uh, were positioned in this area, so predominantly what we've done is we've combined the indicator and the, and the main beam, or dip main beam, into one unit, and we've taken uh, the, the, the main beam into this amazing shark's, uh, shark's profile <laughs> down here, very much inspired by Le Mans GTE. Uh, of course, cars. Yes. So that's yeah. the world first putting the putting the lamps there. You'll also notice that a lot of the surfaces of the car have become a lot more organic. Um, there's a thinness and to, to all of its form, which suggests um, an efficiency in in the car. So basically, it was just enhancing everything that was originally there with the original car, uh, and just taking it to the next the next level, the next reference, if you like. So and it looks looks amazing. It does absolutely. The panels are lighter as well. I think you said. Yes. Yeah, so as a result of a of, a, of an R and D project, which is has been ongoing for the last four years um, and re most recently a production readiness project we've been investigating the use of graphene um, and its use on um, composite body panels so through the use of graphene what we've allowed what we've been able to do um, to maintain structural rigidity for a given panel is we've been able to make the panel between 15 and 20 percent lighter um, so that's one of the main reasons why we've been able to reduce the headline figure of 580 kilos down to 555. But significantly what the graphene allows you to do in the composite, um, not only can we save weight with the use of graphene, but because graphene's thermal properties in the composite tools that make the composite parts, we've reduced the cycle time. So reduced cycle time has also reduced cost, reduced CO2 emissions. Yeah. So it's a world first, it's the world's first series production car to use graphene. Win, win, uh, win, win, win. Cars. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And you're using, uh, I think you said magnesium. Um, yeah, so we're using well. selected magnesium components on the car. So the bell housing, which was previously, previously cast aluminium, is now made from magnesium. All the selected billet components are also now magnesium. And what that means is, is we've actually pushed um, the weight balance slightly further forward. That combined with a bigger fuel tank that's been lowered in the car and a few components, uh, we've managed to reduce polar moments of inertia by basically centralizing them. So uh, everything more in even the car. further inside the world. Exactly. Base, so, what that basically means collectively, lighter weight uh, and, and optimized CFG means reduced braking distances, better rotation in the corners, and better traction out of the corners, especially as a result of the um, re engineered uh, geometry on the car. So, we have more anti dive okay. on the front and increased anti-squat on the rear. Wow. So it's a complete re-engineered uh, suspension system and Erlin's uh, two-way adjustable dampers uh, feature for the first time. So that's a great collaboration that we're very, we're very proud of. And that's, I mean, uh, to me, that's a, a great example of one of the things I, I love about this car from the first time I ever saw a mono is just, all the engineering is, is pretty much on display. I mean, all of this, but, but so much of it is, and it is so beautiful. You can love that sort of, you can love a you know, spring and damper like that, the beautiful Olin's then, 
it's there for you to see, which I think is, is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's testimony to, to, to the whole team, obviously, the, the design team led by my brother Ian and Alan Jenkins, our CTO, and, and it's really where the artist and the engineer come together, actually, so that there really is a beauty um, in the engineering components because so many of the engineering components are actually on show, and it's very much like a, a superbike in that sense. So if you consider a, a Ducati Panigale, you look at the front of the motor of a superbike, it's predominantly all bodywork and fairing with these, with these two forks, and as you move more rearward and rearward you start to see less of the bodywork and more of the mechanical yeah, yeah. and we've, we've pretty much maintained that on this car which was the original concept um, but obviously through some of these clever materials and through generative design it's also helped us to to reduce and optimize weight like the, the brake calipers as an example they've been reduced by 350 grams um, various different weight saves in various different areas has all collectively helped to reduce the weight and optimize the CMG. Collective aggregation with marginal gains and all that. Absolutely, sort of marginal gains, blah, blah, exactly. Uh, but exactly. But I love that in the intake as well. It's sort of, it's a, I've, I've never been a fan of these at Strange Job on Formula cars, but that is so beautiful the way that it's it's a sort of a sculptural piece that it's um, it's lovely, isn't it? 3D printing as well. I know you mentioned that. Yeah, so so we, we've, we've used 3D printing in, in the design process for what's called rapid prototypes yeah. uh, for quite some years, but it's the first time we've used 3D printed parts in series production. So the hand grips on the steering wheel um, are 3D printed. That's after a part of a, a molding process that each individual customer gets to mold it to his hands. Um, the paddles on there are also 3D printed and other engineering components actually brackets and various different mounting parts uh, and, and, and we now use as a result of, of 3D printing. And what 3D printing allows you to do is reduce that design, manufacturing and then prove out and ultimately series production time far, far, far reduces it compared and also opens up different forms and shapes that you would never be able to, to achieve with a CNC uh, or a casting as an example. I mean, have a look at the interior as well. So the new carbon side panels uh, feature for the first time. You'll notice that the steering wheel has, has changed. We've taken the name Mono, strangely, off the car now uh, and made a real feature of the steering wheel and the cockpit. It's all about the driver, as you know, having, having driven the car. Um, Six-way traction control is, is still there. Uh, launch control and auto upshift uh, as the standard features from the, from the current car still exist. Absolutely. Do you have any performance figures yet? Uh, yes, we do. So combined with the 340 brake horsepower and the 555 kilos, if you can do the math in your head, uh, <laughs> equates with 612 brake horsepower per tonne. So 0 to 60 has come down from 2.8 seconds to 2.5 seconds. So the weight save really, really, really helps. Top speed is still about the same, so 170 miles an hour depending on the gearing. Obviously, we've increased drag by adding this. Uh, but we have more power, so that's equalised out the top speed performance. Um, a lot more increase in uh, mid-range torque, so you can expect some pretty exciting lap times at some fairly well-known circuits around the world to come. Absolutely. And tyres, because obviously you've been working with Pirelli. Yeah, tyres have been a result of a two-year collaboration with Pirelli. Very proud of that. Um, and we set out on a journey with Pirelli to, to come up with three different um, tyre offerings. So this is a bespoke version of Trofeo R. It's not just a bespoke compound for this car because obviously there's a technical challenge with it weighing so light. Um, it's a complete construction change of the tyre and a compound. The sidewall stiffness has been completely re-engineered um, because of the, the unique characteristics of this car. And you can uh, easily distinguish the tyre that's bespoke for us because it actually has mono written into the sidewall. <laughs> so that's the, that's the, the track day road tyre. Um, which bridges that gap, but we also have a bespoke slick and a bespoke wet tyre. And cleverly, the way we've engineered those, those tyre packages is you can go from the road to the track, wet or dry, um, without uh, upsetting the, the pitch and the ride height of the car, uh, which, was, which was a very clever, a very clever move. Fantastic. As a niche vehicle manufacturer and being, and being British, I think this car is a result of great collaborative R&D, not only on the, the graphene project as an example, but with a lot of the work we do with all of our suppliers, 50% of which is based in the Northwest. Uh, the titanium exhaust system comes from local suppliers, our billet components, of course our engine, which we're immensely proud uh, with our work with mounting. But this really is a, a, best of, a, a showcase of what Best of Britain can do uh, in this small niche, uh, niche segment space. Fantastic. I'm sold. Can I buy one? Uh, I'm afraid not. Um, so we're only making 30 cars uh, of this. Um, it's already sold out and it's already sold out to 30 lucky owners uh, who have previously uh, owned uh, one of the current cars. So uh, maybe well, next time, Henry. Well, well, there we go. Neil, thank you very much indeed. Lovely to see you. Pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you.